The McDonnell Douglas DC-10 was a troubled plane. Initially hailed as a game changer for long haul travel, the plane's reputation was tarnished by a series of high profile crashes. Both airlines and passengers lost trust in the jet, and while it eventually became a reliable operator, neither its reputation nor its order book fully recovered. Now, it's really easy to draw comparisons between the DC 10 and the 737 MAX. Like the Douglas, the MAX also suffered catastrophic crashes early in its life, and it too has lost public trust. But there's one massive difference between these two planes. While the DC-10 saw its order book stagnate due to its safety concerns, the 737 MAX has not. In fact, the plane's well on its way to becoming an all-time bestseller. So what's the deal? Despite all that's happened, why are so many airlines still buying the 737 MAX? Let me explain. Before hopping into it today, take a look at these pictures. Believe it or not, that's me. I actually used to be a pretty serious athlete, but ever since starting my channel, I've let those habits slip. My current lifestyle, which is filled with travel and working from the couch, has made it tough to stay in shape, and nagging injuries have only made it harder to get back into routine. That's why Trainwell, today's sponsor, has been such a game changer for me. Trainwell connects you with certified trainers who design workout plans around you and your needs. When I got started, I took a quiz that paired me with the perfect trainer for my needs. Then we had a one-on-one -on -one conversation that covered things like my training goals, the equipment I had access to, and any injuries that were holding me back. From there, he developed a personalized program to help me rebuild strength safely. And honest to God, after just a month of using Trainwell consistently, I feel stronger than I have in years. Over that same time frame, my trainer has consistently checked in with me to make sure that I'm sticking to the routine and asking if any parts of the workout need adjusting. This, alongside the app's gamification, has helped keep me motivated, and I'm yet to miss a workout. If you could also use some guidance on your fitness journey, then visit my special link in the description to get 14 days of free training. Huge thanks to Trainwell for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to it. First, let's briefly recap all of the problems that the Max has faced so far. Of course, trouble started in 2018, when a Lion Air Max 8 crashed into the Java Sea. Just a year later, another Max 8, this time flown by Ethiopian Airlines, crashed into the desert outside Addis Ababa. This accident led to a global grounding of the MAX type, and subsequent investigations found some serious issues with the plane's software. Unsurprisingly, these revelations proved incredibly harmful to Boeing's business. Between 2018 and 2020, orders for the MAX didn't just grind to a halt. They actually reversed, with about 800 units wiped from the order book. This period is what I like to call the first MAX crisis. Now eventually this era of turmoil passed, Boeing implemented much needed fixes, and the type was returned to passenger service. But before long, a second MAX crisis would take hold. The onset of this crisis began in late 2022, when it became apparent issues with the plane's anti-icing systems would delay certification of the MAX 7 and MAX 10 variants. This crisis then reached its peak when an Alaska Airlines MAX 8 lost a door in the middle of flight, exposing serious issues with Boeing's quality control. Given the severity of this second crisis, you might imagine that it would also negatively hurt sales. But this time around, the opposite was true. Between 2022 and today, almost 1,200 maxes have been ordered, boosting the ledger by about 25%. Even more surprisingly is that key customers like Allegiant and Lufthansa, both of whom have relied on Airbus for their short-haul fleets, have placed orders for the max during this time frame. This unlikely surge in demand has gone on to cement the max as the third best-selling aircraft family ever, and at list price, the Max's backlog is now worth almost $800 billion. Now, I don't know about you, but this situation seems completely backwards to me. How could a program that's 
so problematic be selling so well? Well, the answer can be boiled down to one simple word, cost. Whether you like it or not, airlines prioritize cost savings more than pretty much anything else. After all, the airline industry operates on notoriously thin profit margins, which can be as low as 5%. This means that airlines are constantly fighting to stay alive, and they'll take just about any opportunity they can to save a buck. Now we can sit here all day and talk about the downsides of the MAX platform and the missteps that Boeing took in its development. But even with all of its warts, there's no denying that the plane is incredibly cost effective. And there are three powerful ways in which the plane helps airlines keep their costs down. The first is acquisition cost. Simply put, the MAX is cheaper to buy than the competition. This is owed in part to the MAX's design philosophy. While the A320neo occupies the same market segment, the MAX is physically smaller, with a skinnier body, shorter gear, and smaller engines. This means that less raw material is needed for its construction. The MAX's design is also simpler, owing to its near 60-year-old heritage. One example of this is the flight controls, which are still operated by mechanical linkages rather than the more advanced, but more complex, fly-by-wire system found on the A320. Now, in a vacuum, these factors alone would make the MAX cheaper to build, and in turn cheaper to buy. But interestingly, the plane's recent struggles have actually made it even more affordable. I mean, just think about it. With its litany of issues, fewer airlines are interested in staking their future on it, so demand for the plane has naturally fallen. To counteract this decline, Boeing's likely had to offer some pretty deep discounts to get airlines back into the fold. And for many airlines that operate on razor-thin margins, these financial incentives outweigh the jet's perceived risk, helping to restore some of that market demand. Okay, so we've established that the MAX is cheap to buy. But just as importantly, it's also cheap to fly. We all know that the MAX is more efficient than its predecessor. Its new Leap 1B engines, re-sculpted tail cone, and AT winglets help bring fuel costs down. But let's be perfectly honest here. The MAX isn't breaking any major technical barriers. After all, it still shares much of its heritage with the original 737 designed in the 60s. But oddly enough, that's actually one of its biggest strengths. If you've watched my channel for a while now, you'll be no stranger to the fact that fuel burn is just one expense that airlines have to worry about. They also have to pay for things like crew training and maintenance. But what I don't think we've talked about is just how impactful these categories actually are. So let's go ahead and break it down. How much do airlines actually spend on fuel, crew, and maintenance? Well, for a full service carrier, they'll spend about 20 to 30% of their operating expenses on fuel. Crew costs, including pilot salaries and training, generally account for around 15 to 20%. Finally, maintenance and engineering make up another 10 to 15%. So at the end of the day, crew and maintenance can actually have a bigger impact on an airline's bottom line than fuel. Now, let's say that you're an OEM and you're bringing a new clean sheet jet to market. If that plane's bringing a 25% efficiency boost to the table, you can afford to add a bit of complexity in these other areas. But if you're making an iterative design change like the MAX, where you're only getting about a 12 to 14% bump, well, you better make sure that those ancillary costs stay low. Otherwise, they'll completely cancel out your efficiency gains. Luckily for Boeing, the 737 MAX is an absolute stud when it comes to keeping these costs at a minimum. It's true that pilots now need simulator training to get type rated on the MAX, but if you're coming from another 737 variant, that training is minimal. And when you consider that tens of thousands of pilots already fly the 737 family, you realize that training up the global workforce costs hardly a thing. The same goes for maintenance. The MAX uses many of the same components as its predecessor, meaning that repairs are quick, straightforward, and easy to learn. In many ways, these advantages make the MAX just as attractive as a clean sheet design. 
Okay, so the Max's low acquisition cost and low operating cost are two reasons why airlines keep buying the plane. The third and final cost advantage that the Max brings to the table is opportunity cost. When we compare the Neo versus the Max, I think we too often view them in binary terms. We generally see the Max as risky and the Neo as safe. But that's not entirely true. Airlines that buy the Neo face risks of their own. The biggest emerging risk is wait time. At the end of 2020, when the Max lost a bunch of orders, the Neo emerged with a sales lead of nearly 3,000 units. This was obviously great for Airbus, but it wasn't so great for airlines at the back of the line. While Airbus does have four final assembly lines across the globe that are producing dozens of Neos a month, it'll still take them well into the 2030s to clear that backlog. This is really where that opportunity cost comes into play. Sure, an airline could hold out and wait for the Neo, but because of the wait times, they'll have to hold on to their existing fleet for much, much longer. Not only does this increase fuel and maintenance costs, but it also risks a decline in customer satisfaction as their cabins grow old and stale. In contrast, buying the Max with its much shorter backlog should in theory give airlines the opportunity to modernize their fleets quicker. I say in theory because, well, Boeing's been struggling to deliver new planes. But in such a competitive industry, the opportunity to secure new jets sooner can make a big difference on your bottom line. So while buying the Max means taking a risk on Boeing, not buying the Max risks falling behind the competition. And with so many airlines having bought the Max recently, it seems that many carriers have deemed this second risk untenable. At the end of the day, the 737 Max is a paradox. It's got a tragic past, a troubled present, and an uncertain future. But whether you like it or not, it does exactly what airlines need it to do. And who knows what the plane ceiling could have been if Boeing didn't rush it to market. If they took more care to get the plane's design and software right, maybe, just maybe, the Max could have become the best-selling plane of all time. So what do you guys think? If you were the CEO of an airline, would you buy the Max, or do you still see it as too risky? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Oh, and while you're down there, why not check out my behind-the-scenes look at the A320 final assembly line? In that video, I take you inside the Hamburg facility where the Neo is being made, and I break down how Airbus builds the jet from start to finish. If that topic sounds interesting to you, I'll be sure to leave a link to that video right below the like button. Oh, and thanks again to Trainwell for sponsoring today's video. To find your perfect trainer and get 14 days of free training, visit my link in the description. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.